This was 16 completely new songs and it's been really enriching and it's made me think I can be thrown in a completely new situation with big guys and carry myself with confidence and grace and skill and feel good. Oh, do it again. I may say no, 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 no. The first time I ever heard Sophie, I was listening to a jazz radio station. I forget, I was out of town, I don't remember where. And there was a, a version of a standard. And I was really struck by the richness and the size of her vocal instrument. That's waiting for you. There's something about her voice that sounds her age to me, which is really special. Um, it doesn't, it, there's a retro element to it, but if I, when I heard it and I thought, well, how old is that person? When I first heard her, she was probably 23. Oh, she sounds like she's in, in her 20s, which was kind of nice. It was not even there. The way this record is different is, I think, the scope of it. I mean, I have strings and I have every single instrument imaginable soloing and guesting and lending colors and it was extremely exciting and made it feel way bigger than anything else I've ever done. I think of her records, it's where she first felt really comfortable in what she was as an artist and it felt like a really good statement as here I've arrived and this is my sound and this is my point of view. Do it again. Ooh, do it again. Yeah, do it again. The amazing thing about working with Matt is that he really knows what he wants. I would bring him lots of songs and he would say, you know what, this particular word, in this particular line, I can't buy you singing it. Or I can't, I don't believe, let's say, a woman singing it if, if it's one of those tunes where we change, you know, we make it from the female perspective. And I'd be like, you know what, this is a guy who goes deep into a song. I'll say no more goodbyes if trouble. With the right song match with the right artist, then you can have some magic. And I think with her, because there's so much richness in her voice and there's so much nuance and that exotic little bit of accent and coming from Russia to Israel to Canada, I think makes it possible for her to be that much more individual. I'm sorry. I like to make records that take listeners on a journey, that show different aspects of me, that aren't boring, that are interesting, and he really reads into the lyric, really checks out the melody, and really is able to imagine what I would sound like on it and whether he buys it or not, way before I even sing it. So selfish to words that could describe all actions of my when patience is in short supply. What was important for me for this record, because we had a few different directions we were going to go to arrangement-wise, was the stability in the rhythm section. One, two, one, two, three. Calling Larry Grenadier, who's one of the greatest bass players in the world who I've worked with for 15 years or so, and Lewis Nash, who's one of the greatest drummer is not just a great drummer but an incredible all-around musician and those guys had played together a bit so we were able to play off of both of their experience and the diversity of their musical palettes and to have them on the entire record so that then when we changed some of the other roles based on the material that stability still existed I'm not the girl who cared about love. there's an added responsibility and thrill when you have Larry Grenadier and Louis Nash and uh, Gerald Clayton and Gil Goldstein and Chris Potter and I mean, I'm so starstruck. The technique of kissing, 
really surprised me. I came in with kind of like a more traditional view on it and then Julian started plucking his guitar and he just started making these sounds and the other guys just came in and this, this thing was born and I sang it completely differently than I've ever sung it before. You know I'm used to sort of singing it big and speak low and whatever but it wound up being this like super tender interesting kind of groovy track that was really surprising. Our moment is swift, like ships adrift, we're swept apart too soon. Speak like every 10 years there's this conversation, is jazz dead? Like I remember reading articles from the 60s, is jazz dead? Jazz isn't dead, it's like asking if classical music is dead, it's not dead. There will always be an audience for it, there will always be a market for it, and there will always be people who want to play it, because it's awesome. That tomorrow is near, tomorrow is here, and always too soon. I think this record is a great example of how seasoned and experienced musicians can work together with you know, sort of the new guard or you know, the young cats. And I think it's really up to us to take the music out there, and I think young people doing it is, is really hopeful and it's really inspiring. Darling, we're Descends, everything ends too soon. 